When you think of hard video games, one franchise that probably doesn't come to mind is Super Mario. For the most part, Mario games are pretty easy. They're made to be enjoyed by everyone after all. But if you get far enough, pretty much every Mario game has at least one level that will push back. Some levels will have you banging your head against a wall, and some might even lead to a broken controller or two. Before I say any more, let me address what this video is actually going to be about. Today I'll be looking at the single hardest level from each of the main Mario platformers and ranking them against each other to separate the not so difficult from the brutally tough ones. That's what I mean by the hardest, hardest levels. How did I come to determine what the hardest level in each game was? Well I did some digging on the internet and watched a few videos to see what the general consensus was, but ultimately the final decision was based on what I personally thought the hardest level was, which did mostly fall in line with the other opinions that I saw. It's pretty clear cut in most games. And for fun, I decided to count New Super Mario Bros U and Luigi U separately this time around, which gives us an even 20 entries. For the sandbox games, each individual star, shine sprite or moon counts as its own level. Oh, and pretty much every level in the original version of every game is eligible for this list, apart from the challenge mode in Mario Bros U, and stuff that isn't readily accessible, like the secret levels exclusive to Mario Run's Remix 10 mode. And we're not talking about how hard it is to get the collectibles or anything, just how hard a level is to beat. Lastly, I did impose a couple restrictions to make the list a bit more fair. Power-ups that provide unlimited flight or invincibility like the P-Wing and Invincibility Leaf are off-limits. But other power-ups are fair game, and any character can be used. I also decided to eliminate any unintended skips or glitches. With all that said, let's begin the list with the easiest, hardest level. <laughs> For this game's hardest level, it's pretty easy. To be honest, I wouldn't exactly call any level in Super Mario Bros 2 hard, but the level that gets closest to that descriptor is 5-1. The challenge mostly lies in the second area of the level, where the player is met with a series of logs descending from the waterfall. Nothing too bad, but it's after this where it gets a little tricky, as you'll then have to time your jumps onto these fish in order to make it across to safety. This is pretty much the worst of it though. The level ends with a boss fight against a birdo that doesn't shoot eggs, but hitting birdo with the mushroom isn't too bad. Mario 2 is a pretty easy game. 5-1 is as hard as it gets, yet it doesn't pose much challenge at all. It's a worthy number 20. The original Super Mario Bros is definitely harder than its sequel, but the reason for this is only really due to the fact that lives aren't plentiful, so your amount of tries on each level is limited. It's not really because the levels themselves are all that difficult, but if there's one level in particular that people struggled with, it's 8-3 hard mode. Because of the Hammer Bros, Hammer Bros, and Hammer Bros. God, so many Hammer Bros. If only you could get a Fire Flower to take them out with. Well, you actually can. There are two hidden power-ups in this level, one among the first set of bros and one among the second. So as long as you can get through these without getting hit, you have a weapon to take down the pesky row of them towards the end of the level. This makes it a whole lot easier. If you couldn't get a fire flower, this level would definitely place higher, but because you can, it's really not that bad. And you may be wondering what's harder about hard mode than the regular level. Honestly, I have no idea. But it's hard mode, so it must be harder, damn it. <laughs> New Super Mario Bros didn't feature a star road or any extra levels beyond the final boss, so we only have the regular levels to pull from. The hardest level for me, by a small margin, is 8 Tower 2. Again, this is another easy game overall, so we're not in the super hard territory just yet. 8 Tower 2 is based around the snake blocks. Players have to keep pace with a fairly short snake block platform while dodging a fire bar or two, or on occasion, three. Ooh, slow down New Super Mario Bros, there's kids playing. The difficulty picks up a tad following the checkpoint with the introduction of spike balls, and after that there's the hardest version of Bowser Jr to take on, but overall, yeah, not super hard. This spot could have potentially been replaced by 8-1 or 8-8. The difficulty of these three levels is roughly even, but 8 Tower 2 has a less forgiving checkpoint and a boss battle, which is why I chose to go with that. <laughs> Now, I'm sure you're very surprised to see New Super Luigi U so low on the list, considering it was advertised to be a harder version of New Super Mario Bros U. In a way, it is. The levels do appear more difficult, and indeed they are. However, there's a fatal flaw. You start every level with 100 seconds on the clock, so the levels are way shorter in general. And since the levels are over quickly, even the hard ones are pretty easy to clear. And you're probably looking at the footage of 9-6 fire bar sprint and thinking, wow, that does look hard. I bet new Super Mario Bros is blushing at all those fire bars. Here's the thing with fire bar sprint. 
You just have to sprint at the right time at the beginning of the level and you'll make it through. Maybe not in one piece, but you'll clear the level. It feels like it's just luck, which is more frustrating rather than truly difficult. But keep at it and you'll get through. It's as simple as that. Getting a little harder now, we have Super Mario Land's 4-2 hard mode. Again, nothing crazy hard, but we're starting to see more of the ingredients that makes up a typical hardest level. And what that is here is really just the amount of enemies. The beginning has a ton of Koopas, which let's not forget explode in this game. And while you're trying to avoid those, there are those nuisance pom-pom flowers to keep an eye on as they also shoot projectiles. Projectiles are a bit of a theme in this level. If it's not the pom-pom flowers, it's bullet biffs or fire nyololins. It's bullet biffs or fire nyololins. It's bullet biffs or fire nyololins shooting balls at you. The beginning is where the majority of the difficulty comes from and there is a checkpoint after that. Don't let your guard down towards the end with the small moving platforms and make sure to avoid the Kaitensuru Hono? What? Mario Land, just call it a fireball, please. Super Mario World's Tubular. With just one look at it, it's easy to see where the difficulty comes from in this level. It is the only level in the game where you have to navigate the entire thing with a pea balloon, which can take a little bit of time to get used to. But you don't have much time, as you have to quickly get to the next pea balloon before time runs out, which is easier said than done, because there are plenty of enemies trying to snipe you down. It is hard, but I personally don't think it's that hard. The level's only like a minute long, and the most challenging parts are all within the first 30 seconds. Once you pass the first set of volcano plants, you're pretty much in the clear. So for those 30 seconds, just remember to breathe, become one with the balloon, and you should be able to beat this level no problem. To show he's the superior of the two brothers, Luigi's star in Toy Time Galaxy is much tougher than Mario's. For Luigi's purple coins, players have 3 minutes to hop atop an 8-bit Luigi to gather 100 of the 150 available purple coins and make it back to the star. All the while, any green platform that is touched will disappear. Not only do you have to keep this in mind while collecting the coins, but you also have to leave enough platforms to be able to return to the start to collect the star. Oh, and did I mention that Luigi is wearing poison that can kill you as soon as you touch it? The time limit isn't much of an issue. It's the disappearing and rotating platforms that are the biggest problem. But with a bit of careful planning and some skillful platforming, this tricky star can be overcome. The hardest level in Super Mario Sunshine. Your mind is probably going immediately to the Pachinko game because it's so stupidly broken. I thought it would be that too, but I ran across this tutorial by YouTube user Dead Loser, and after following his method, I got the Shine Sprite very easily on my first try. And so, entering the list for Sunshine is a certain other infamous level, Lilypad Ride, a level we all hate to hate. The Lilypad mechanics are an unintuitive mess. Add that together with the rushing tide pushing you forward, and a limited amount of time before the lily pad sinks, and you've got the hardest Shine Sprite in Sunshine. That being said, there are only 8 red coins that you have to collect. With a bit of trial and error, and some luck, it is possible to brute force your way through this one. Just make sure to nab yourself a few 1-ups before tackling this one, as just getting to this level from Isle Delfino can be a pain in the backside. Lilypad Ride is without a doubt one of the least enjoyable levels on this whole list. It sucks. <laughs> The hardest thing about Super Mario Land 2's Wario's Castle is its length at just under 5 minutes. Which I know doesn't sound like much, but for a 2D Mario level, that is pretty long. Each room has something new to tackle. Giant spike balls and fire breathing statues, awkwardly placed moving platforms, giant fists, spikes and more spikes, weird Wario faces and a face off against Wario himself at the end. Luckily, the hardest section is the first room and there are plenty of power ups to aid you up to and throughout the fight with Wario but it can be easy to lose your nerve and a life near the end, forcing you to replay the whole thing. The lack of a checkpoint is really what places it this high, but the abundance of power-ups keeps it from being placed higher. With this next level, we are slowly creeping into very hard territory. New Super Mario Bros. U's Superstar Road does have a fair amount of more than tough levels, but for my money, the hardest of them all is 9-8 Pendulum Castle. As you'd guess from the name, it's a castle full of pendulums, which already sounds pretty hard, and it is. Throughout the whole level, there will almost always be one or two pendulums on screen at any given time, and they are placed in such a way that eliminates the option of speeding through. This level is a game of patience. Players will have to work out exactly where Mario can stand to avoid a pendulum, and exactly when he can make his move to get past it. There are two particularly tough parts. 
This one in the middle where Mario has to let the donut blocks fall at a specific time to be able to jump under the pendulums, and this part at the end where he has to sprint across some timed red blocks. The level in story mode is hard, but it is tame compared to what Pendulum Castle has in store in the challenge mode. All of the stars of Super Mario 64's Rainbow Ride are difficult on their own, but what if you had to do most of them at once? That's kind of what it's like to get Rainbow Ride's 100 coin star. In order to get to a century, you have to explore most of the map, which means passing the platforming challenges set for most of the other stars all in one run without dying. This means crossing the swinging platforms, taking the magic carpet ride, and wall jumping for the red coins. And you have to nab some blue coins this time around too. Miss too many blue coins, and you might as well restart the level. Need I remind you that you're in the sky, so any slight mishap could easily lead to your demise. Which sucks, because there are parts where you have to jump over some slides. Getting this star requires nerves of steel and the ability to not choke, which isn't really something a person can have. The one saving grace is that you aren't required to make the journey to the manor. Thank god. New Super Mario Bros Wii's 9-7. Another level where it's easy to see why it's so hard just by looking at it. Not only do we have those wonderful ice physics that all gamers love, but tens of fire piranha plants whose main goal is to melt the ice, revealing munchers that Mario can't stand on. On top of this, there are a bunch of prickly goombas spread across the ice. The only way to deal with them is with fire, but even Mario's fire melts the ice. So for safety, you're better off not using a fire flower at all. To top it all off, we have the two fire bros at the end of the level, that will heed your progress by removing the ice platforms that Mario needs to stay alive. There's a lot to deal with here. Thankfully, the level is of a standard length, so if you've managed to avoid damage throughout the first half, you could just hell marry it to the end, but avoiding damage is easier said than done as there's so much to deal with. It's a cleverly designed level though. Props to Nintendo. This is a fun one. A vast majority of the levels on this list have been optional. Super Mario Bros. 3's 8 airship is very much mandatory. It's just a random level in World 8 that happens to be very hard. How cruel. The difficulty comes from the combination of two things, the many rocky wrenches and the speed of the scrolling. Take away any one of these two things and the level would be quite manageable, but the two of them together make a deadly combination. There are no power-ups at all in this level, so I hope you came prepared with a tanuki leaf, because if not you're in for one hell of a time. A tanuki leaf does help a lot as it makes it easier to traverse from platform to platform, but it only takes one hit to reduce Mario to a mere man. That's why this level is higher than Mario Bros Wii's World 9-7. In that level, you could make good use of damage boosting. In World 8 Airship, one hit is devastating. To make matters worse, the level ends with a fight with Boom Boom. Not a difficult fight like all encounters with Boom Boom, but slipping up against him can be soul crushing as it means going right back to the beginning of the level. I'm just happy it's short. Beginning with Super Mario Galaxy 2, every 3D Mario game contained a super hard level that served as one final challenge upon completing everything else that the game had to offer. The easiest of these super hard levels is Super Mario Odyssey's Long Journey's End. It is by far the longest level on this list, clocking in at just under 10 minutes on average. It's an absolute gauntlet of challenges, one after the other, with not a moment to let your guard down. It requires good platforming skills, quick reflexes, and the ability to think on your feet in order to clear. The hardest part for me is definitely the part where you have to scale these swinging walls using a Pokio. Apart from that, everything else is pretty manageable, but doing it all in one life is where the challenge lies. However, this level could be much harder. For some reason, it's very generous at giving out free health. Because of this, you never really have to be careful about getting hit. During the Burbo section, you can tank a lot of the damage, and the reason I find the Pokio section the hardest is because it's really the only part where you can fall to your death. So while this level will still take a decent amount of skill to beat, it's not quite as hard as it could, and honestly should have been. Next up is a level that some of you may never have even heard of. Super Mario Run's Make the Cut. Do you like Super Meat Boy? No? Well too bad you're playing it. The gimmick of Make the Cut is buzzsaws. Buzzsaws everywhere. And you just know that Super Mario Run makes it harder because you aren't given a chance to breathe let alone plan your next move. Granted, the bubbles essentially give you three chances per run, which makes it easier, but don't think for a second that it makes it easy. There's one part where you have to have immaculate timing or you're getting hit, simple as. Straight after that, we have these two buzzsaws close to each other where, if you don't time your jump perfectly, you'll end up hitting the second one and likely be thrown into the lava. That's the thing, getting hit by a buzzsaw will slow down your character, which will throw the timing of everything off. 
At this part, I just decided to tank the damage of the first hit, which did help me get through that particular part, but it meant that I could only take one hit in the following Buzzsaw Onslaught. I'm just thankful that you can play as Luigi, as his higher jumps make the level a bit more manageable. We're really getting into the hard stuff now. It's known as the hardest Mario game ever made, so you knew the Lost Levels was going to be high on this list. And the hardest level in that game, in my opinion, is D4. Not one that people usually pick as the hardest level, but let me explain why I think it is. It's this goddamn section here. Look at it. Take it in. A hammer bro on the same tile as a piranha plant with wind blowing. It might not look too harmful, but let me tell you from experience, it is. There are a few ways you can tackle this part, and none of them are safe. You can run as soon as you get out of the pipe and try to jump over the hammer bro, which is pure luck and hardly ever works. You can try to time your jump for when he's not throwing hammers, also random and if you feel like you've messed up your timing and hesitate, the wind will push you into him. What's more frustrating is sometimes the hammers are invisible. Great. In any case, once you're past that nightmare, are you home free? <laughs> no, because of the final encounter with Bowser. Just take a second to look at this screen. I don't care if you've played PT, Resident Evil 7 in VR, or Bubsy 3D, this is one of the scariest things in any game. When taken on its own, it could be a lot worse. He could be throwing hammers. But even then, just working up the courage to attempt to skid underneath Bowser takes a lot, as if you miss, you've got to get past that damn hammer bro all over again. There is a mushroom earlier in the level, but good luck getting that. And I guess you could enter this level as Fire Mario if you make it through D3 without getting hit, but yeah, that's much easier said than done. You may have been expecting C3 to be running for lost levels, but C3 didn't take me nearly as many attempts to get through. Don't get me wrong, C3 is really hard stuff, but you can make some of the jumps easier by lining up the platforms with the left side of the camera, and it does have a pretty generous checkpoint. I can't say the same for D4, but what I can say is that despite how infuriating of a level it is, it isn't any higher because there are only two troublesome parts. If only that were the case for these next four levels. <laughs> Your reward for completing everything in Super Mario 3D Land was World 8 Crown, a level that is significantly harder than whatever the second hardest level in 3D Land is. While the level of difficulty is mostly consistent throughout, I do think that the beginning is where most of the challenge lies, specifically the part where you are jumping over blocks. They're placed in a very awkward layout. With 3D Land's somewhat rigid jumping physics, you have to get the perfect run up in order to build up enough momentum to land on the single blocks, but not so much that you overshoot it. Following that is a fight with both Boom Boom and Pom Pom at the same time in their most difficult forms. It's pretty easy to get hit once or twice here. Then we have the raining bob -ombs, the fire bars, and then this section where you're dodging like 10 things at once. Get past that and you can breathe a sigh of relief. That sound like a lot? It is, and you have to do it all in one life. There's no healing midway through like Mario Odyssey, although you can always keep a tanuki leaf in reserve. Having a tanuki leaf at the start definitely helps too, but the block placement is so awkward that it can still be tricky even with the ability to slow your descent. The next few levels are similar to this one in how they're designed. What makes 3D Land's 8 crown the easiest of this bunch is that the hardest part is at the beginning. Although the second half is way harder than anything in the rest of the game, it's not quite as hard as what we're about to see. <laughs> Champion's Road is essentially 3D World's equivalent to World 8 Crown, but even harder. The beginning isn't as bad, jump over a couple fire bros and charging chucks, but after the warp box is where the difficulty is ramped up significantly. We have these blocks that alternate fairly rapidly. Not only that, but the ground each section covers is rather large, so you have to be both quick and calculated to stand a chance of getting to the other side. The next two sections with the Magic Coopers and Fuzzies aren't too bad, though it's quite easy to slip up and take a hit. Following that, scaling the wall with the Horned Ant Troopers and Piranha Creepers isn't too bad either. The same goes for the part with the water. However, it's the final section that really separates the Marios from the Baby Marios. Players are forced to run for their lives across a series of dash panels while collecting five key coins and avoiding the shock waves of five ring burners. Five ring burners it doesn't sound like much, but the way they're laid out makes it feel more like a hundred. For me, this part really defines the difficulty of this level. You're running completely out of control with hardly any areas to land in safely, all while trying to collect the coins and make sure you don't go careening off the side. If this part was at the beginning of the level, perhaps it wouldn't be so bad, but it's so easy to die here, and dying once means resetting all of that progress you just made and having to do all of that difficult platforming again. Pro tip, Peach's floating ability makes this level a lot easier, but by no means does it make it easy. 
This is without a doubt one of the hardest levels in Mario history. In terms of extremely hard Mario levels, the perfect run from Super Mario Galaxy 2 is the one that set the standard. What's funny is that the perfect run is the second romp through Grandmaster Galaxy. If you thought the ultimate test was tough, well how about we take the same level and make it so that Mario dies after one hit? That should up the ante a bit. It definitely does. This is one hard level. The difficulty increases with each new section. The first two are quite simple, some Yoshi swinging and switch pressing. Then there's an electric maze area that tests the player's skill with the Cloud Flower power-up. The difficulty then ramps up a bit with some tight platforming amongst octopuses and ring beamers, the latter of which behave themselves a lot more than the ring burners of Champions Road. Then players have to carefully make their way across electrified platforms and pull stars before they are greeted with the hardest section. And it just had to be more Hammer Bros. This part may not look too hard, but trust me, with the nervousness that you've likely gained from many failed attempts up to this point, it is. One small slip up, and it's over. And that goes for the whole level. You don't get any chances. The real killer in this level is complacency. After multiple tries, it's possible to master everything leading up to the Hammer and Boomerang Bros, but because the level is 5 minutes long, you'll likely be looking for ways to cut corners to get there faster, and that won't end well. It's called the perfect run for a reason. You have to be perfect. And that's why it is almost the hardest Mario level of all time. <laughs> You might be wondering, what could possibly be harder than the perfect run? And from New Super Mario Bros 2 of all games? Well, if you've ever taken a gander at the DLC, you'll know. The impossible pack is not messing around. It is by far the hardest thing in Mario's history. There's no question, no debate. If you're unaware, Nintendo released a handful of new levels for New Super Mario Bros 2 in the form of DLC packs, which were accessible in the coin rush mode. Some were just levels to help fill your coin counter, some had neat callbacks to past games, and some were tough challenges to test people's platforming skills. Then there's the Impossible Pack, a set of three insanely hard courses that will push even the most hardcore Mario fans to their limits. So let's walk through it. It starts off with the easiest segment of the whole pack, swimming past some spiny cheap cheeps, porky puffers and cheap chomps. When attempting to beat this pack, you'll be intimately familiar with this part by the end. Then it's followed up by one of the hardest parts of all, where you'll have to avoid crows and bob -ombs, all while manipulating the pinwheel. Sometimes the crows will come back for revenge, and sometimes they won't. Then there's the Lakitus and Spinies. The only way I managed to get past this was to time it so that I could spawn the Lakitu and throw a bomb at it to steal its cloud. Course 2 sees players performing some tricky wall jumps among rotating blocks and fire bars, then doing the same on the next screen but adding some more flame chomps into the mix. If you manage to get through all of that, then that means the Mario Gods have granted you one attempt at Course 3. And what do we have in Course 3? Plenty of buzzsaws and rising poison that you can only avoid by carefully timing a jump on the note blocks. Then it's a quick sprint across some obstacle filled conveyor belts, then getting the positioning and timing right to jump over the fire bros, all while avoiding their fire attacks as well as the poison. And after all that, you can pat yourself on the back, because you've just beaten the hardest Mario level of all time. It took me days of attempts to make it through this torture. Now, you may be thinking, hang on, isn't that three levels? Well, in coin rush mode, if you die once at any point, you go back to the beginning of course one. The only way to clear the impossible pack is to beat all courses in one go, so it is like one big level. The only thing that makes the impossible pack a little easier is that when you pass a checkpoint flag, although it doesn't function as an actual checkpoint, Mario does grow big, and you can use this to damage boost through some of the more difficult parts. If this wasn't there, this pack might truly be impossible. Well, there you have it, the hardest, hardest Mario levels. Let me know in the comments how many you've beaten. I'd especially like to know how many of you have actually braved and bested the impossible pack. Subscribe for more videos like this on Mario and other games. And until next time, have fun playing video games.